Hey everybody, it's Lindsay, and I'm here today to show you how I use my alcohol markers to color on craft paper. Now I'm going to be using Avery's Peony Stamp Set. I've used this before, and if you want to watch that video, I will link that in the top right hand corner. I did some no line watercoloring with it, but today I'm going to use it to stamp onto this craft cardstock, and then I'm going to color it in with my alcohol markers. I'll use the Dick Blick Studio brush markers, but any alcohol markers will work. So the first thing I want to do is go ahead and get my little bouquet stamped out. So I'm just going to do some very quick masking and just make a nice bouquet of these peony stamp sets or this, these peony stamps. Now I'm not taking too much time here to really lay these out. I just want it nice like a hand-picked bouquet that you would make yourself. So I'm just stamping these down with Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I am using my Misty because on some of these I do need to double stamp with this ink. This ink just isn't a very rich black ink like I normally like so double stamping just really helps me get to that intense color. I'm going to also stamp a few leaves there at the bottom and then I decided it wasn't looking quite as tall as I would like it to so I'm just going to stamp one more large flower at the top and also go ahead and stamp in that vase that holds all the flowers together. Now I did a little planning with this just because I wanted all of my flowers to look as if they would fit in the vase. I think that's really important when you do this. You want to make sure that it looks realistic. I know these are more cartoonish images, but you still want it to look realistic whenever you do this. Now I will go ahead and double stamp this again and just make sure that that gets nice and black and you can really see it because this is a dark color cardstock. And then I go ahead and I'm going to remove my mask and there you can see I've got a nice big bouquet of peonies ready to be colored. So I wanted to add just a little bit of a line so it looks as if these are sitting on a table. I always like to add just a little bit of a horizon line I guess you could say to make my images and my scenes look a little bit more realistic. So I'm just using my T-square ruler to bump up against the left-hand side of the cardstock and a micron pen just to go ahead and draw a nice straight line a little bit up from the bottom of the vase so it looks like it's further behind. Now the main thing you want to focus on whenever you do your coloring on craft cardstock is you want to make a swatch sheet. Now I went ahead and printed off my chart that I made. You can get these for free over on my blog if you have the Dick Blick Studio brush markers because I couldn't find a swatch sheet so I made one and I put it up for free on my blog if anybody's interested in that. Now one thing you want to remember is not all colors are going to look the same as they do on white cardstock and you're going to have color group you're going to be given new color groups too that can blend together that wouldn't blend on white cardstock so just have a little test sheet of paper and that really helps so you can see if your colors are going to blend nice and easily. But that color sheet and that color swatch sheets that I made is really what I'm going by to make sure I get the right colors on this cardstock. Another thing you want to make sure of is I noticed that my craft cardstock tended to bleed just a little bit easier with alcohol markers. So just another thing to keep in mind whenever you color, you might need to come back in and do more layers. I didn't have a whole lot of problem with the bleeding. I was able to get everything down in one layer without bleeding, but it did bleed more easily for me than it would have on a white cardstock. So maybe stay back from the lines a little bit also whenever you're doing this. Now for my flowers, I decided to use some really dark maroons. When coloring on craft card stock, if you don't use a dark color, it's not going to show up very well. So I'm using a very dark maroon, a very dark red, and then a lighter pink just to be able to blend this out very well. And these showed up nice and intense on this card stock. So whenever you're picking out colors, just make sure the best advice I can give is to test them out before you start coloring and just really do a test sheet and also wait until they're dry because your colors are going to look darker while they're wet. Then once all that alcohol does evaporate from your marker that you've colored on the paper, it's going to be a little bit lighter than what it actually appears to be. So I'm just finishing coloring up these 
flower petals and I colored each petal individually. I started with the darkest at the bottom of each petal and then worked towards my lightest. Now I'm going to work on those leaves and I'm just going to use a couple different colors of green here. And again, you can see my little test sheet that I have there and I am testing these out before I take them to my cardstock. So I just want to make sure that they'll blend nice and well and make sure that all these colors will go ahead and work together on this particular cardstock. And then I just wait for it to dry and then I can see that these will work so I can go ahead and color with them. Now it does take a little bit of time to test these out, but you don't want to go back and ruin all the coloring you've already done just by being impatient at this point. So I'm just going to color in those leaves and then I'm bringing back in my swatch sheets so I can start to color this face. I'm going to use some blues and you will notice that I use a very light blue on this. Now this blue is not going to show up as any color, it's just going to show up as almost a clear. When I put it on first, it's just going to look like I'm making this cardstock a darker brown. And that's basically what it's going to do at this point. It gives a little tinge of blue, but not a lot. Then when I come in with this darker blue, I'm going to just put it right underneath where the flowers are and the leaves just for a little bit of shadow and also just around the sides and just a very thin line at the bottom. And then I can go ahead and come back in with this lighter color and it's just going to go ahead and it's going to look even darker brown, but really it's just blending out that blue. And then there you can see it looks sort of like a blue vase, but it's not a completely blue blue like it would be on white cardstock. It's very pretty and just something different. Now I use some browns for my little table, I guess you could say that it's sitting on, and these really, it intensifies the browns whenever you put them on, so that's one you really do want to go ahead and check and swatch out before you start coloring with. Now I went ahead and used just some light grays just to add a little bit of highlight around this vase of flowers and really make them pop. And again, this is not going to show up great. It's just going to show up almost like um, I've made the cardstock just a little bit darker around it, but it makes a nice little highlight. So I'll just finish doing that. And really that completed the coloring. So I needed a birthday card, so I'm going to go ahead and use this stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. It also comes with a die if you choose to buy it that way, but I'm just using the stamp set today and I'm going to pull off the sentiment that says birthday wishes. Now I'm going to go ahead and just place this on my cardstock exactly where I want it and I'm just testing out a few little locations here. I wasn't exactly sure I didn't plan this card out before I started it, but I end up putting it in the bottom left hand corner here and I'm using my Misty to stamp this just because I have put so much work into coloring of these flowers that I don't want to screw it up. You'll also see that I'm going to go ahead and use my embossing bag just in this spot at first, but then I thought better of myself because I am going to emboss this sentiment. I go ahead and I put some of that powder from this embossing bag over the entire color image just in case any portion of it was still a little bit wet. I didn't want my embossing powder to stick to it. So I went ahead and covered that all with that embossing bag and then I'm going to go ahead and ink my stamp up with some Versamark ink and then I can just close the lid of my Misty and I can stamp this down onto the bottom right hand corner there. And because I used so much of that embossing bag powder on this, I'm going to go ahead and double stamp this and since I'm using my Misty, it's really nice and easy just to go ahead and flip that lid open, ink it right back up and stamp it back down in the exact same spot. Now I decided to emboss my sentiment in Ranger's Super Fine Detail Powder in gold, but when I opened my jar I noticed that the gold had almost settled at the bottom. So just when yours does that, and sometimes they do that, your embossing powders, just put the lid back on, give it a good shake, and then go ahead and heat emboss just so you get a nice rich color with your embossing powders. So because I had used so much of that embossing bag powder on this just to prevent any stray powders or any possible wet alcohol markers still soaking up that embossing powder. I did have a nice white residue on my cardstock as you can see. To get rid of that all I did was take a very lightly damp baby wipe and just went ahead and swiped that over the cardstock and that just took off all that remaining white powder that was on there. So now I have a nice clean card front ready to go. 
So to put this card together, I first started off with a maroon A2 card base and this is, I will put on my blog the exact color of this cardstock. I'm not sure off the top of my head what it was, but I just used some double sided adhesive to put that down. And then I'm going to use my quick sticks tool and I'm just going to place a scattering of sequins across this card. Now I had already planned out exactly where I wanted these just because I have trouble placing my sequins so when I go ahead and plan them and lay them out I'm able to just really come in and do this nice and quickly on camera. It just helps out with my process. And you can see I'm using my quick sticks tool. That's another thing that helps me place these on. On one end of this tool is a nice little sticky end and as it becomes less and less sticky as you use it it's kind of a gummy so you can just pull that off kind of crank the top of it just slightly and then more product comes out so this really lasts a long time. Now on the other end is like a little pick or a pointy end and then a flat end also that can be used for placing a sequence like you see here. It can be used for removing glue or get it, help getting die cuts out. Just a really versatile tool and it just really helps with a lot of processes in my craft room. So now I used a dark cardstock for my card base, so I need a white panel on the inside so I can write in a personal message for this birthday card. So I am just taking a piece of white cardstock that measures four by five and a quarter, and I just used a sentiment from that same sentiment stamp from Simon Says Stamp that I used earlier, and then peonies in the top left and bottom right hand corner. I just stamped those down in Versamark ink. I'll cover those up with the same gold embossing powder that I used before. And then I can just go ahead and heat set this and I've got a nice decorated inside of the birthday card ready to go. And I just used the same double sided adhesive as before to tuck that right inside the finished card. And that finished the card off for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will leave you with just a few pictures and this close up. For the complete supply list, you can head to my blog, craftingwellcaffeinated.wordpress.com. The link is in the description box below, as well as that top right hand corner, the little eye will get you there too. Thank you guys so much for watching and happy crafting.